All right, we're live here tonight at Faith and Victory Church. I guess you'd call this the uh, extension location. This is in my office. <laughs> but uh, praise the Lord, pastor asked me to uh, have service tonight. And uh, I tell you what, I'm always on go. You know, I'm ready to teach. Praise the Lord. So I'm glad you could join us here uh, tonight live. Uh, getting the live service coordinated is always a challenge, but uh, that's okay. This is Dr. Bill Bailey, and I'm uh, welcoming you tonight to Faith and Victory Church, the Piedmont Triad. And I tell you what, we got some good things <clears throat> that we want to share with you this evening. So pull up a chair or, uh, you know, tune us in, however you tune us in, if you got a laptop or a, you know, a desktop or tablet or whatever you may have. Some of you may be even projecting it up on the big screen TV. So uh, however you receive it, I'm glad you're here for the service this evening. Uh, we're going to, like I say, get into some good stuff. I uh, do want to encourage you to give toward the Building Fun campaign. I tell you, that is going strong. I know it's just climbing a little bit at a time, but as we've said before, you know, if, if folks could get... Did you know that one of the first things that was crowdfunded... I kid you not, this is a true story. One of the first things that was crowdfunded uh, was, or crowdfunded, was <clears throat> some guy who said, I wanted to make a sandwich. This guy said, I want to make a sandwich, and I need somebody to help me pay for it. <laughs> so he put it out on, you know, GoFundMe or whatever it was that he used. Kickstarter, I don't know. And... Uh, he ended up getting fifteen thousand dollars for his sandwich. That was quite a sandwich. But if people can give because it's silly to give toward this guy getting a sandwich, then surely we can come together and give to get into a permanent building for Faith and Victory Church. <clears throat> I mean, we have been Faith and Victory Church has existed and been in many different buildings throughout the years, <clears throat> but we've never had our own building. 30 plus years, we've never had our own actual building that belonged to the church. And that's the vision. That's what we're shooting for. So if you can't give financially, you can give of your time. And by that, I mean you can spread that URL, which is fvc.org slash building. Okay? Spread that URL. Send an email. Send a lot of emails. <laughs> put it on Twitter. Put it on Facebook. And uh, I tell you, it will be a blessing because we'll see <clears throat> the uh, donations come in for that. And by the way, if you want to give toward any of our efforts, you can do it through Square Cash with this uh, do uh, Dollar Faith Victory Church is the uh, Square Cash so uh, destination to send it to. You can go to PayPal, which is donations at fvc.org, send to that. Or, of course, you can just, as Pastor says, we always take cash. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you can send that in uh, to the church. And <clears throat> I tell you what, any way you give, it is greatly appreciated. Amen. Let's go ahead and receive our offering tonight right here at the top of the service while I have that up on the screen. And... Uh, Father, we just thank you that we have the opportunity to come together this evening and to take the time set apart to get into your word and, Father, to give of our substance into the ministry, into Faith and Victory Church. And so, Father, as people give tonight, I believe that the needs of Faith and Victory Church will be met abundantly. And because of that, in turn, <clears throat> as we give, it is given back to us, and Father, I know that Luke 6, 38 is real to the people that are listening right now that give into the ministry. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, praise the Lord. Well, let's open our Bibles to Philemon. And unlike what Belinda said earlier, it's not filet mignon. <laughs> She asked me not to say that, but it was just too good. It was too good of a of a thing to not to leave out. Philemon, yeah, no, it's Philemon. Philemon. And we've got a story about Philemon that we want to give you before we even get into the scripture. 
it's good to know the background to these scriptures <clears throat> before you get into it and read it. Philemon was a, an acquaintance, close friend of Paul, and he was a wealthy man, very rich man, had a large house, okay? And he was well known. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> you know, back in, in their day, you if you were going to go to church, you had to go to an underground location, so to speak. You couldn't just hold church out in the open, okay? So they had to have places they could go that were well-known but somewhat secretive. And this very wealthy man, Philemon, opened up his abundant house. He had a large house, many rooms, and uh, his house was large enough that an entire church could assemble in it. It was a house church, but it's not the kind of house church we typically think of of just a couple of people squeezed into a little house. He had a big house, and the, the whole group there could meet together. And they accommodated Paul and his traveling companions when they came to the city. So all of Paul's team that came with him, all the ministers that ministered with him, they put them up there at Philemon's house. Now, Philemon had a wife, uh, Aphia, and they ministered together. Basically, they were a husband and wife team that pastored this church that met in their house. And then they had a son, Archippus, and he helped in the ministry as well. <clears throat> and as I put this study together, I couldn't help but think about our pastors, the Taylors, and how their family is so involved in the ministry. Very similar situation in that regard. The whole family was involved in ministry. But now, as I said, Philemon was a, a very wealthy man. And because he was a wealthy man, as many people in that day, he had people who worked for him that literally were slaves. Now, this was the, the society of the day. We know that slavery, slavery in and of itself is wrong, okay? But back in that day, it was very common. And there was a slave that worked in this house of Philemon and uh, Aphia that, whose name was Onesimus, okay? And apparently, <clears throat> he was not born again when he was a slave in the house, and he uh, apparently stole some money and ran off, ran off uh, to the big city, okay? And so Philemon was not happy <laughs> about Onesimus doing that. And uh, I'm sure it created some bad feelings with the family because this was a trusted servant, and yet he stole some money, apparently, and ran off. Well, <clears throat> this is where we find Paul writing this letter to Philemon. And we're going to be reading out of the New King James Version. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, so Paul and Timothy were there together as they wrote this, to Philemon, our beloved friend and fellow laborer. Now, the other thing I want you to keep in mind here is that Onesimus, who had run away, was actually the one who penned this letter. He wrote it as Paul dictated it. Now, think about that. Some of the things he's going to be saying in this letter are not exactly favorable to what Onesimus had done. But Onesimus, in this meantime, had been born again, received the Lord, and now was no longer a slave to Philemon, but was a slave on the run who had gotten born again under Paul's ministry while he was in prison. We'll see that as we get a little further, but let's keep reading here. He's writing to the beloved Aphia, Archippus, our fellow soldiers, and to the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Then he goes on to say, I thank my God, making mention of you always in my prayers. This whole family together there. Hearing of your love and faith, which you have toward the Lord Jesus and toward all the saints. Now before we go any further, I want you to think about what he's commending them for. Their love and their faith. <clears throat> faith works by love. If you find a faith man, you will find a love man. That's a Selah moment right there. I want you to think about that. 
If you find a faith man, you will find a love man. It was often said of Dr. Kenneth E. Hagin that he was a man of love. He exemplified the love of God. And he was a great faith man, as we know. He often taught on walking in love. <clears throat> Matter of fact, I've heard many who have said that while he was teaching on walking in love, they would kind of squirm in their seat because it was kind of tough on them. But it's because it's what they needed to hear. I heard uh, Larry Hutton recently on his TV show talking about the fact that Brother Hagin teaching on love, and he was sitting out there going, oh, oh, oh. Oh, Brother Hagin, <laughs> why are you bringing this up? But it's because he needed it. And so it was with so many that were hearing him in that particular message. Faith and love, they operate together. They operate together. And so he's commending them, hearing of your love and faith, which you that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of, of every good thing which is in you, in Christ Jesus. Now, I could teach a couple hours on that one verse of Scripture, but I'm not going to, okay? Don't get nervous. I'm not going to. But here's the thing. The sharing of your faith becomes effective. Now, we want our faith to be effective. We want sharing our faith and the love of God to be effective. Amen. That's tantamount in our hearts that we want to do that. But how do you do that? By acknowledging every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Amen. How do I acknowledge all those good things? Well, I've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So I acknowledge that as a good thing. I've been saved. I've been born again. And I'll be going to heaven when I leave this earth. That's a good thing. I can acknowledge that. I've been healed supernaturally. This body was healed and raised up off of the deathbed because of faith in God and faith in his word. I can acknowledge that. And by acknowledging that and all good things that God has given us, then I can share my faith more effectively. See, what God has invested in you, you can invest in others. Another Selah moment right there. What God has invested in you, you can turn around and invest in others, which is why he's commending them for their love and for their faith. Remember, faith works by love. So, he says, the sharing of your faith becomes effective in the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Okay, now let's keep going. For we have great joy and consolation in you, in your love, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you, brother. Speaking to Philemon, speaking to the pastor of this local church, and the one that he's going to be talking about, his servant, Onesimus. So first he tells him, you've been effective in your love and in your faith. You've acknowledged all that God's invested in you, and you're investing it in others. And the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you. Therefore, <laughs> see, he gives that preamble. But then he says, therefore, though I might be very bold in Christ to command you what is fitting. So his ears perk up here. Philemon's ears, whoa, what's he gonna, what's he gonna tell me? Yet for love's sake, I rather appeal to you, being such one as Paul the aged. Now, this is his way of saying, I'm an old man now. I'm in prison. I fought the good fight. And you hold me in high regard. So I want you to listen to what I'm saying. He says, as Paul the aged... And now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ, because he was in prison for what he was preaching. I appeal to you for my son, Onesimus. Here we go. Notice he says his son, Onesimus, whom I have begotten while in my chains. While I've been in prison preaching, Onesimus was one of the ones that came to the Lord through my preaching. Because of that, 
I am a father in the faith to him, and he is a son to me. And then he says, who once was unprofitable to you because he was a slave who ran away and perhaps even stole some money. But he says, he was once unprofitable to you, but now he's profitable to you and to me. Then he goes on to say in verse 12, I am sending him back. Now I want you to think about this. <clears throat> in the natural, in the society of that day, a slave that had run away from his master, if found, could have been put to death. So in one sense, Paul is basically pleading for his life here. But beyond that, now that Onesimus is born again and is a brother of Paul and of Philemon, he's saying, okay, one time he was not profitable to you. He ran away, and we're going to see in a minute why I say he probably stole some money. But he says, I'm going to send him back to you. You, therefore, receive him. That is my own heart. That's what I desire with all my heart whom I wish to keep with me. Now notice what he says about Onesimus. He is so, you know, he's so pleased with Onesimus helping him. I mean, Onesimus is the one penning this letter as Paul dictates it. He's very crucial to Paul's ministry there in prison. He says, I wish to keep him with me, that on your behalf he might minister to me in my chains, for the gospel, that he might be a helpless minister to me. But without your consent, I wanted to do nothing. See what he's saying? He's saying you need to consent that he, when he goes back to you and you talk to him and you deal with him there, send him back to me of your own free will that he may help me in prison. And so he says, without your consent, I wanted to do nothing but that your good deed might not be by compulsion, as it were, but voluntary. I don't want to basically hold the fact that I'm Paul the aged and, so to speak, over you in uh, authority to take advantage of this situation. I want you to make a decision as you walk in faith and love to do the same thing toward Onesimus. It was as much for Philemon's sake as it was for Onesimus' sake. Do you see that? All right. He goes on to say, For perhaps he departed for a while. He did. <laughs> for this purpose, that you might receive him forever. No longer as a slave, but more than a slave. A beloved brother, especially to me. But how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord? If you then count me as a partner, the word partner here is a fellow helper together, joining your hands together and helping in the ministry. If you count me as a partner, receive him as you would me. Receive him as you would me. With the same, think about it, they would love to have Paul there. They would love to put him in their best room in their fine house, feed him good food. He's saying, treat him like you'd treat me. And if he's wronged you, wronged you, or owes you anything, put that on my account. So he perhaps did take some money when he left because he wasn't bored again then. And he left that house, you know, deceiving them and leaving what he shouldn't have as a slave. But he said, if he's wronged you or owes you anything, put that on my account. I, Paul, am writing with my own hand. So he takes the pen from Onesimus, and then he writes with his own hand. I will repay. Not to mention to you that you owe me even your own self besides. That's strong. <laughs> Amen. That's stronger than dynamite. Paul said, you owe me, but you put this on my account, and I'm going to repay you if I have to. Now, I'm sure that Philemon is sitting there going, oh, Paul, no, <laughs> hold on. But, see, that's the thing. That's what Paul is doing. 
He says, yes, brother, let me have joy from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in the Lord. Having confidence in your obedience, I write to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. Now, he's already said, treat him like you treat me. Put him up in your finest room. Give him the finest food that you would for me. But he's saying, I know you'll even go beyond that. You see what I'm saying? But meanwhile, also prepare a guest room for me. Now, here's Paul in prison. And you got to love Paul. <laughs> because even with him in prison, what's he doing? Is he, woe is me. I'm in prison. I'm not going to make it. What am I going to do? No, his position was, I may be in prison, but I'm preaching the gospel. And when God's through with me here, I'm going to go, and I'm going to come be in a guest room in your house. <laughs> he was looking forward to that. He says, meanwhile, prepare a guest room for me, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be granted to you. In other words, as you pray for me, support me, then I will be there in person myself. Then he goes on to say, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, greet you, as do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, Luke, my fellow laborers. See, this is his entourage, if you will. They were all in prison. They were all ministering there. But they're greeting Philemon through this letter. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. 25 verses, one chapter, simple letter. But I tell you what, it is chock full of information about how we're to live how we're to conduct ourselves, what our comportment should be as believers. Now, there are a lot of people that say, now, you know, Dr. Bill, they wronged me. They did me dirty. And you're asking me to love them. Well, that's what Paul was doing here. This guy was a slave in Philemon's house. Apparently a trusted servant. The fact that he got away and probably stole some money when he left means that he wasn't under tight observation. They trusted him. Yet he ran off and took some things with him. In the natural, Philemon had every right to be pretty ticked off. But Paul's saying, look, I know of your love. I know, therefore, because faith works by love, I know of your faith. I know how you are blessing the people that are in the church that's in your house, and I'm asking that you extend a hand of fellowship even to Onesimus, who has wronged you. He did that before he was born again. He's now born again. He's now your brother in the Lord. You need to receive him. You need to forgive him. And whatever there is between you, set it right. This is how we're to live as believers. Even if somebody has legitimately wronged you, you put that down and look at them through the eyes of love, the eyes of the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. And we come together. See, we're to come together to minister this love and minister this faith outside of the church and to the world. Onesimus was not born again before Paul got a chance to preach to him. Now he is. So Paul was able to preach to this guy who was in the world, had done wrong, and now he's born again. He's asked for forgiveness. He's gotten all that straight. And now he's gone back to his former master and is getting it straight with him. And he's saying, listen, you need to receive him just as you would receive me. And that kind of, and you got to remember, this was, boy, this society, this was, this was something. This was unusual, highly unusual. And yet, God chose to include this in the canon of Scripture because of what it shows us, because of what it teaches us, because of the example of this situation between Paul, Onesimus, and Philemon, and the church that was in his house. Don't you know that the church in Philemon's house heard about this after all this occurred and had even more reason to be refreshed 
and encouraged by their pastors who received Onesimus back into their home. And hopefully, and I think he did, Philemon sent Onesimus back to Paul to help him in the ministry and become part of Paul's helps ministry team. Wow, that's exciting. See, I am a teacher, but I'm also a helps minister. And it just blesses my socks completely off (laughs) to be able to help the local church and to minister as a helps minister in the local church. So this whole story of what happened here is close to my heart as well. That Paul would desire him to come and minister as a helps minister for him there in the prison where they were ministering. And as you see, he wrote, Onesimus wrote the bulk of this letter as Paul dictated it. Now this is all information that we get from uh, theologians that have studied this and have, have gone over this and gotten all the details. And I appreciate that. I appreciate being able to read some of the commentaries and some of the things about this uh, event in Paul's life and being able to put all this together and see it as more than just reading scripture and saying, you know, how does this apply to me? To hear the background and hear all of how this came about makes it even more personal and even more forceful in how it applies to us. And let's go back up to that verse of scripture that I love so much. In Philemon 1 verse 6, The sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. See, this gets into all the in him realities. Now, E.W. Kenyon has a book, In Him Realities, that you ought to read. Brother Hagen has a little booklet, In Him that covers these scriptures that talk about who we are in Christ Jesus. Everything that is good about us here in the earth is because of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has invested into us, that we've been made the righteousness of God, that we're born again, that we're joint heirs with Christ Jesus, that we're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, that our God supplies all our need by his riches and glory, by Christ Jesus. See, it all comes back to being in him. It all comes back to being who we are in Christ Jesus, who we are in him, in whom, all of those scriptures, so critical, so important. Take some time, some time, and study out those in him reality scriptures. And like I said, I just gave you a couple of books, E.W. Kenyon's In Him Realities, Brother Hagin's In Him little mini book. You can read that mini book so fast, and it will bless you so much to study that out and to read that. Oh, praise the Lord. I encourage you to do just that. And I trust that this has been a blessing to you that you've received from this this evening. It's kind of a short message, but it's something I wanted to share as I studied this out and prepared for this, uh, for this evening's message. And I just wanted you to take the time to study it out as well with me. Praise the Lord. Trust you enjoyed it. Uh, you probably can't see it, but I love this new shirt. just came today. This shirt has a picture of Jesus on the front, you know, kind of like a, a warrior. I, I guess it's, I assume it's, that's who it's supposed to be, but it's a warrior. And uh, it's got on the back, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I love this shirt. This is just cool. <laughs> so I wanted to share that with you as well. I just got it right before I came in to do the uh, to do the message tonight. So you'll see me with it. <laughs> Hallelujah. But anyway, trust you enjoyed it. Let's pray and we'll be dismissed. Father, I thank you for this opportunity we've had to share your word. I thank you, Father, that the Holy Spirit is taking it, ministering it to the hearts of the people, and helping them see that faith does work by love. And as we love one another and we forgive one another, Faith is made effective in our lives. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, trust you enjoyed it this evening. Remember until next time to fulfill the word of God.